Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with Seek Weapon Miniatures and another two minute tutorial for you. In another tutorial I covered why I generally use white primer instead of black on my display pieces, uh, but a lot of folks asked about the zenithal priming technique where you base coat the model in black and then use a zenithal spray of white to uh, pre-shade the model. And I'm going to cover that real quick. That's something I, uh, I don't talk a lot about because if you don't have good control of your airbrush, particularly uh, thinning your paints so that you can create the right level of translucency, uh, then using this technique doesn't save you anything, it doesn't gain you anything. Um, just very quickly, uh, it's really simple to overspray. If your paint is too opaque, um, if you apply too much of it, uh, you're going to lose the uh, saturation, desaturation effect you've created here uh, by pre-shading. I'll give you a very extreme example of this. I have a translucent red uh, from Dollar Rowney, which I will load into the brush here. Just straight out of the pot in this case, save us some time. No need to thin this one, it does come translucent. So you can see, black and white, doing light sprays of my red over the top of that. So very, very light. You can already see how the desaturation of the black, how that pre-shading is going to impact the color here. As I build up layers to create a more proper red, The effect remains visible. The trick, of course, being nice thin layers. Maintain your translucency. I'm going to over apply paint here just a little bit so you can see. But right there, I mean, you can see how it works with a translucent paint. Translucency really is key. I cannot overstress that. But let's take a uh, quick, more realistic look at how this works. Rinse out between colors here. And I'm going to take another one of these sockets and actually spray it up a bit. I'm going to start again. I'm just going straight out of the pot with my dollar brownies. All of these are translucent colors, which is why I picked them and why I'm going straight out of the pot. If I was working with uh, P3, Vallejo, Reaper, what have you, uh, I would definitely have to start in a cup so that I could uh, thin the color and create the translucent consistency I was looking for. So just quick thin layers. I'm just working super quick on this one. And of course the color I use here in the base color is going to uh, tint the ones I put over the top because I'm working with translucency. But you can see the zenithal technique because I sprayed from that angle, the backs of these rocks are also black. So it is desaturating there as well for me. Normally I'd work uh, back and forth, light color, dark, dark color, light color, dark color, until I was happy with everything. Because if we're doing a quick demo, of course, it's just going to be uh, one pass for each color here. Well, I say that, but we'll see if I can actually stop myself. This is Burnt Umber, again, Dollar Rowney, translucent color. Coming in, doing a bit of shading. Tinting some of that dirt. You can see the difference, you know, even between here where there's some white and here where there's none. Just the difference in that color. One more time, translucency is key. If your color is opaque, I'll pull out an opaque color and show you what happens, actually. Doing a quick highlight. Well, I think about which opaque color to put over the top of this. Ah, I don't have one. There we go. At the end, I'll put some red earth over the top. It's an opaque color I use a lot when I'm basing, especially. Nice uh, base coat for my reds as well. This is flesh tint, still a translucent color. Staying with my zenith. Last but not least, give it a quick shot with some Prussian blue.
So again, here's the bass very quickly. And normally, like I said, I'd come back and I would go up, I would come back down again, I'd knock that blue back with some brown. And I'm gonna, I have to, I can't leave you there. So we've got quick interest, quick color, and again, the way this works by doing the uh, white spot over the black base uh, is with translucent colors. Uh, in opaque color, it's a lot harder to control. If your paint isn't thin enough, it isn't translucent enough, you're going to have a hard time maintaining that pre-shading. It'll just paint right over the top. This is uh, Red Earth, again another Dollar Rowney. This is an opaque color coming straight out of the pot. And even in thin layers, you'll watch very quickly how even here, I lose that color underneath. So right away, you can see even a quick pass, everything is now completely saturated with the color, so that even if I come over the dark areas, very little of that pre-shading remains. It's much more consistent. You can see I'm working in the same thin, quick passes. But right away, you can see how the opaque color makes a big difference and really drowns out that pre-shading. So that's it. That is the Zenithal Technique, how it works for rattle cans or for airbrushed primer. You know the trick now. Any questions, Mr. Justin at SecretWeaponMiniatures.com or find me on Facebook.com slash SecretWeaponMiniatures. And of course, you can always leave a comment here. Happy hobbying in the meantime. Thanks for watching.